Yeah, it's a good question, Melinda, because of course the word openness could mean anything. But basically what we've identified is that within any nation, you'll find some cities that are more attractive and more accessible to mobile people than others. If you like, some cities are more closed, some cities are more open. So what does open mean? And uh, the studies that we've done have been quite revealing. Um, on the one hand, they say that an open city is generally a city where there's a clear agenda around migration and cosmopolitanism and how do we make the most of being a diverse city and there's a real positive feel that this is the right thing to be in a global system and there's a, an organized city leadership that makes things happen in an environment where really local governments were not organized to address the settlement of international populations. Um, on the other hand we've done some really scientific work on what are the ingredients of openness so we can begin to identify what kind of infrastructure and connectivity make one city more open than another or what kind of amenities and local services make a difference uh, what kinds of um, economic opportunities make a city more open and so there there's a very detailed answer as well you can see why it is that cities like London and New York just to take an example two of the most successful cities of the last century a key part of their success was openness to international population Um, I like to talk about the competitive advantage of diversity to a city. You know, it's, it's an economics term, isn't it? Competitive advantage. If you think about diversity, why would a city benefit from having a diverse population? Well, in, in the current era, there's big benefits in terms of trade. So, for example, a city like Miami, which has built up its diverse population, is now a great trading uh, sort of hub for the Caribbean and for Latin America. Or there's creativity. You know, a city like Cape Town discovers that because it has a diverse population base it can create new kinds of film and fashion and music and software that it wouldn't do if it just had one culture. Uh, or you'll discover for example a city like Barcelona where the Olympic Games made Barcelona open to the world and now it attracts people to study in Barcelona from every corner of the world including studying for degrees in English in a Spanish-speaking city so that's very interesting. So openness and diversity enable a city to be more productive, more creative, to trade better, and also to offer a better visitor experience. You know, I, I, uh, I take the, the idea of London, the city that I'm from. 25 years ago, you wouldn't want to come to London because we couldn't offer you a nice range of cuisine. But now if you come to London, we can offer you cuisine from 200 different countries around the world. So diversity is a competitive advantage for cities if they learn how to use it well. Yeah, very interesting question. I mean, if you look, if you look at Europe, just to begin with, obviously uh, one of the most diverse cities in Europe is actually Istanbul. And Istanbul's sort of long-term role to become one of the leading cities of Europe is going to make it a very interesting city in terms of uh, ethnic and racial and religious mix, population mix. Istanbul has been historically a very open uh, centre of migration. I think it will become one again. Uh, but also, if, you, if, if, you're looking at, uh, if you're looking at Europe more generally, you have to imagine that the, uh, uh, the, the cities in the Mediterranean base, and we've mentioned Barcelona, Barcelona has attracted uh, immigration in a 10-year period, the equivalent of what most other cities do in 50 years. It's very dynamic. Now it's been called the capital of the Mediterranean. I think it's really going to develop that role. If you look at Asia, then you know, a city like Hong Kong is very interesting because given its colonial past, there's a habit of speaking English and Mandarin and Cantonese uh, in Hong Kong. And it's quite possible that Hong Kong, Hong Kong will become the first truly triliteral city in the world where all of the Chinese-speaking world and all of the English-speaking world can speak to each other in Hong Kong. So that's going to be very interesting for them. Uh, in the Americas, of course, Sao Paulo is going to be one of the great diverse cities of the 21st century. That's emerging very rapidly. But we should also think about cities like Miami and Toronto, which uh, in the North American context have been some of the most dynamic in terms of population growth and diversity. These cities are the new world cities that are going to have a very interesting role, I think, to play, not just in uh, 
uh, leveraging the advantages of diversity, but also in making a contribution to solving other kinds of challenges that the world faces, such as climate change. And doing that with a diverse population uh, adds real value because it means uh, the insights that you have and the innovations that you create are applicable in so many other countries.